All right. Welcome to the surprise late night stream, because we have a lot of records to open. And um, I didn't put a video out today because I was going to be putting one out that got delayed. So the video is going to be coming out tomorrow, um, early tomorrow. It'll probably be out 10 o'clock Pacific time. I guess that's not that early, but it's earlier than I usually put them out. Um, so I figured tonight I would do a live stream for those that usually miss my typical 6 o'clock one. Um, and I would open up records because I have 13 mailers to open up. So I'm very excited. What's up, Becht, Wendy, Jewelry, Connor, Charlie? Um, this will be just a fun surprise stream. And I, I there's a lot of good stuff in these... In these uh, these mailers here we got one right here that'll be the first one open um but yeah lots of lots of good albums to talk about um roland's got some trader joe's frozen risotto so you know it's gonna be a good night uh i am very excited to open these records i've been i was trying to figure out the day i wanted to do a live stream and um it, it just ended up being today. You know, Wednesday is my usual release day, and you'll understand why my video got delayed tomorrow once I post it. Um, it's synced up with a really cool thing that's happening in the vinyl community, and it's happening starting tomorrow, basically. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. Um, but I will get started. I don't know if this is going to really be a huge um, live stream because it's a random, unannounced stream so if we keep it intimate that's great if it gets big that's also great um what i will say is this for those that if it's your first time here please hit the like button it's really quick and easy and free um if you want to leave a super chat in the chat to my side i will answer any question during the live stream um to the fullest of my abilities but otherwise i usually save q a till the very end because i want to get through the records so again you want to do a lot if you want to do a, a a question drop me a super chat which is also appreciated it supports the channel and let's get into it let's just go in i don't know what is in here but i know there's some good stuff so let's let's get it let's get it all right this was not a, this was this is a disaster from the get-go all right i'm always terrified i'm gonna like rip the record oh shoot what just happened my screen just Come on. All right, we're back. So first up, we have the American Dollar Lo-Fi Dimensions 2. So something about this band that's really interesting is the American Dollar is one of the first ambient, like, modern classical, I, mean, I guess maybe not modern classical, but first, like, ambient, down-tempo-ish acts I ever got into. Their first couple albums are incredible. They have a collaboration with Arms and Sleepers, which is one of my favorite acts. Um... And their sound has shifted over the years pretty dramatically, just like Arms and Sleepers, which also started as an ambient record. Um, this is more of kind of like lo-fi, beady, like a little more of a, of a beat to it um, than their early stuff, which is definitely more on the side of ambient, kind of pretty down-tempo textures. This has a little more of some energy to it. I have not heard all of Lo-Fi Dimensions 2, but Lo-Fi Dimensions 1, which came out last year or two years ago, I can't remember, was amazing. Um, so I have no doubt they're going to follow it up with something great. Um, if I remember correctly, the disc is really cool too. Let me let me open the let me open the record for you guys so you can see the variant. Um, let's let's do a little shrink wrap therapy, shall we? All right. Oh, I'm losing stickers. All right. Um, yeah, it looks, looks cool. Let's see. Oh my gosh. There's stickers, or there's, there's, there's download codes stuck to the record. That's some static electricity right there for sure. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Um, earth, earth splatter, I'll call this. It's, uh, yeah, I like it. I dig it. Um, if you like lo-fi, I'm sure you'll dig this record, so you should definitely check it out. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that one. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. All right. Hope you guys are all having a good night. Um, I saw someone mention Donda. Yeah, I am extremely excited for Donda. Although, with Kanye these days, it's one of those I'll believe it when I hear it things, you know? I don't know if, uh... You know, I don't want to get my hopes up and have him not drop the record. That would be devastating. 
Um, okay, here we go. Ooh, this jacket actually feels plussed up. I think they might have done a better... Maybe not. Maybe I just haven't touched this jacket in a while. Um, this is the fifth time I've purchased this album because if you guys watch... If you guys are diehards of this channel, you know that I put this in my top five records of all time. This is none other than of Montreal's Hissing Fauna, Are You the Destroyer? Um, this is the recent Newberry Comics variant. It's really cool. It's a blue and clear with yellow and red splatter. Um, I... I, I love this record. I'll buy any variant that comes out of it. It's psychedelic pop perfection. It's absolutely manic, and it's um, it's catchy, and it's edgy, um, and every single song is good. There's no lull, and that includes a song called The, pa uh, the Past is a Grotesque Animal that's extremely long, and, and it still manages to keep attention, um, which is a, a testament to how on fire um, the Kevin, you know, KB was during this this phase of his career. So if you guys have not heard of Montreal, please listen to this album. I promise you, this is the ultimate introduction to their sound. It is, my opinion, their best the best thing they ever done. Um, also, very fun live. So check them out if you haven't had a chance. Oh no, I'm dropping mailers. I'm dropping mailers, folks. All right, let's keep let's keep the train rolling. What's up, Ryan here? What's up, Ryan? All right. I'm just, they call me the mailer mutilator. That's my, that, that'd be my rap name because I just take these mailers and I make them my, you know what. So this is cool. I, um, you may, you may think you know what this is from first looking at it, but you might be wrong. Um, I know this looks a lot like an album by a band called Arcade Fire entitled Hissing, uh, not Hissing Fauna. <laughs> wow, how late is it? Entitled Neon Bible. Um, this is, uh, in fact, the album Neon Bible, but it is not by Arcade Fire. It is by a band called A Giant Dog. And they decided to cover the entirety of Neon Bible. First of all, I'm loving all the spot foil on this jacket. That's such a nice touch. I think it's so easy to plus up a record jacket, and when people don't do that, um, I don't know. It feels like you don't really value the whole concept of your art. It's not that expensive to add these touches, and people really appreciate them. And when you have the medium of vinyl, I feel like you really should take advantage of the entire process, but that's neither here nor there. Um this is something really cool. It's, you know, a lot of these tunes are actually pretty faithful to the original, but some of them have definitely deviated. And I think this is a very, very good, um, Roland's being a troll in the chat. I told him that Neon Bible is my favorite Arcade Fire. And he is like offended by that, which is ridiculous. I also think The Suburbs is a little overrated, but I'm not here to fight people. I'm just here to show off some cool records. Um... So let's keep going with the unboxing action. There's a lot to get through. Um, and I forget what's all in here. Oh, this was a... Um, someone just asked about uh, DJ Muggs. And that's funny because I just unboxed something that he was involved with. Um, so this is... Um, so, okay. Okay. This is an album that I, I missed out on at the original sale, and I have been waiting for it to go up on Discogs for a fair price. Um, this was still a little expensive, but the way that Muggs prices his records before the aftermarket is crazy. He like Everything on his site is $50 to $100 before aftermarket. I think I got this for $120, and it's the gold version signed by DJ Muggs and Mayhem Loren. This is Gems from the Equinox. Um, Mayhem Loren is one of my favorite rappers. If you've never seen the show F That's Delicious by Action Bronson, um, Mayhem Loren is the star of that show to me. He is so fun and down to earth, and he's also an amazing rapper. I've managed to collect most of his records. Um, I think he is extremely underrated. Everyone knows Action Bronson because he kind of broke through into like the mainstream, but I really believe that Mayhem Loren holds his own, especially on his own projects, and with Muggs at the helm producing... 
this one is a gem for sure, pun intended. Um, so I'm glad I finally pulled the trigger on this. I can't wait to spin it. Hopefully it sounds good and I don't feel dumb for having purchased it. Time will tell. Time will tell. Um, all right, so let's keep going. I think this is another hip hop record. Um, did I go to Record Store Day? I uh, did stuff for Record Store Day and I'll be doing a video. Again, I wanted to put it out this week, but things got carried away. I'll probably be doing my RSD 1 and 2 recap next week. Um, I hope you guys don't think that's too late. I hope that you'll be okay with me talking about RSD drops 2021, you know, a week and a half after the fact. But, um, I have thoughts on RSD as a whole. I have some RSD pickups and I have some other pickups that I got on RSD weekend. So I'm going to do kind of like a double haul, I guess, triple haul and, uh, kind of sharing some thoughts on where RSD is going. So look forward to that in the coming weeks, um, or next week, I should say. This is Asan Eastwood uh, and Finn, the S-O-U-L, with the nice OB strip. Um, Asan Eastwood is a, is one of the underground rappers that are really crushing it. Um, a lot of them are, you know, a lot of the rappers kind of sound the same to me, and they don't really differentiate themselves in my mind, but Asan Eastwood is one of those ones that kind of transcends, and, and I love this art. Can we just talk about how great this art is? Um, the disc itself is really cool too. Um, really, really cool. Holy crap. Look at this. I love that. I love that splatter. Really beautiful. Um, good combination of colors. Very striking. Um, and yeah, I really love Asan Eastwood. There's a lot of good features on here. Daniel San, Flea Lord, Cypher Soze. Cypher Soze. Oh, and Family Gang Black. Lots of good. If you guys like underground hip hop, Asan Eastwood. Check them out. You will be very pleased. Um, someone just asked if I got the new Kings of Convenience album. I did. And I actually listened to it tonight while I was cooking dinner. Funny you should say that. Um, one of my favorites of the year, without a doubt. I will say that my pressing, I got the white vinyl pressing. And maybe it's just my copy, but it's a little noisy. It's like, I, it was, the music's so soft and beautiful that I was a little distracted by the noise. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Um, but yeah, I still enjoyed it. Um, one more reminder, we got 69 people in here. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. We only have 20 likes. It is super easy to do so. And it shows YouTube engagements, which their algorithm likes whatever that means um and i appreciate it the other thing of super chats is totally optional but knowing that you support the channel with the super chat always means quite a bit to me so thank you to anyone in the past who has super chatted and anyone in the future who does it as well and i'll answer your question oh wow i ordered this ages ago holy moly um this is quadrato x quadrato x this is some Vaporwave record. I feel like I might have impulse bought this. Um, I had a, a cassette tape by Quadrato X. I think it was called Pain Station back when I was first collecting uh, Vaporwave cassettes. Um, and um, yeah, this is another, this is one of his albums and I might have, I might have jumped the gun on it. I don't know. I, I have to re-listen to it. But ooh, this feels hefty. Is this 180 gram crates pressing? Um, very cool variant. I will say that. You know, Vaporwave is all about the aesthetics, so they have to, uh, they have to, um, you know, appreciate that when they're doing their stuff. Um, David Fritz asked if I got A1. Um, I love A1, and I don't know, I ordered some records a while ago, I don't know if they, it could be in, it could be in this, this bundle of stuff, I, I truly don't know. Um. Uh, NBA Live Girl says, peace, peace, Re RSD video soon. I just talked about that probably right before you got here. I am doing an RSD video next week. Um, better late than never. So, you know, just trying my best. I'm trying to keep afloat. I got a lot of things going on right now related to this channel and not. Um, but there's good stuff coming. This is, this is one that's atypical for my usual things I show on the channel. This is the Velvet Goldmine soundtrack. Now, anyone that knows me well knows that I'm not a huge movie guy, but I love soundtracks, um, which is weird. But this movie is about the, the glam rock era. And what's cool about this movie is not only the lists of uh, artists that are on here, 
notably Brian Eno, Placebo, Pulp, Roxy Music, Lou Reed, T-Rex. Very glam heavy. The best part about this is there's a band on here, I think, one, two, three, four times called The Venus and Furs that was um, um, just for this soundtrack. And The Venus and Furs is Tom York from Radiohead doing his best Brian Ferry from Roxy Music like impression. Um, so cool. Tom York doing glam rock is something that I never thought I'd hear in my life, but here we are with this soundtrack where we get four tracks of it. Um, if you haven't tracked this down, this is not quite out of print, but it's one of those records I think is right on the cusp. So if you have not purchased it yet, listen to it and try to track one down because I have a really strong feeling that within the next three months, this is going to be, this is going to skyrocket in price. For so I just, I'm just predicting it. So check it out. Um, Velvet Goldmine, Tom York glam rock need i say more i don't think so for those who have just showed up welcome to the live stream i still have about six or seven records to unbox if you would like me to answer your question immediately you can drop a super chat in the chat it can be one cent it can be 100 million dollars i'll answer it the same either way but it supports the channel all right let's keep going Um, what is this? Why did I order this? Oh, this is actually not for me. This is for my buddy. Um, I don't know this rapper. Six black, six lack, slack, six lack, free black. Um, my buddy loves this guy and this was out of print, I think. And I saw a restock of it and I bought it for him. Um, I think it's out of print again. Maybe not. I don't know. But this is one of his favorites and, um... I, I try to keep an eye out for my friends if I see stuff that they're into because I'm kind of more hooked into this than a lot of. Um, Pizza Rat with the first Super Chat. Can we get a little round of applause for Pizza Rat? Classic Pizza Rat. Um, thank you for the Super Chat. Much appreciated. Are PVC vinyl records toxic and dangerous to own? It's a really good question. Um, I have seen some stuff about that lately kind of bubbling up um my gut is that they're not a hundred percent non-toxic however records have been around for a very long time and people aren't just dropping dead in their homes from being around their records um you know if, if having a lot of records causes you to be in health problems i would be in major trouble based on this room that i spend 80 percent of my time in um so i would say no i would say unless there's like extreme circumstances you should probably be fine um i think it's probably just people sensationalizing maybe a study that was found that showed something i don't know um i haven't looked into it enough to truly have like an educated opinion on it but that's my answer thank you pizza rat um this is a very this is going to, I'm going to have to like, I don't even know how to open this. It's like a layer of, feels hard on the inside, but it's like a layer of tape around a layer of like paper bag. I don't know. I'm like worried I'm going to, ooh, I almost ripped something. All right, hold on. This is a terrifying mailer. I got to be honest. Oh my God. Even inside it's, it's, it continues to be crazy. This is like, I'm, I'm really earning, I'm earning this record, whatever this is. Guys, are we, are we on this journey together? What the heck? Look at this. This isn't the record I own. This is just padding, but like, this is like a, this is like a true, um, it's like a true, man, how do I even open this? I feel like this is a Zelda puzzle. Someone just asked if I believe in a thing called love. And my response to that is, just listen to the rhythm of my heart. That should be the answer that you're seeking. Um, oh my gosh, this is... What record could be in here that's this secured? Is this like a... Ooh, oh my god. Oh, something smells really bad in there. Maybe that's the toxic fumes we're talking about. It smells like 
What is that smell? It almost smells like chemically. I have no idea how to open this. This is wild. Um, as I try to open this, thank you, Tyler, for the super chat. You have about 700 records. How do I have time to listen to, you believe I said, 3,000 records? Um, that's a really good question, and I'll answer it um, a little bit, but I will say this. Uh, I did a video a couple months ago called I Don't Listen to My Records, Here's Why. If you haven't listened to that or watched it, it's I, I'm really proud of that video because it's not really what it seems on the surface. It's... Um, it's, uh, it's a video talking about how, you know, there's not enough time in the day to listen to all your records and how you feel this need to go through your backlog. And ultimately, the way I look at my collection is that it's always in flux. And I was talking about this in the TMR Facebook group today. Um, but uh, the record collections are always in flux. And I have my whole life to listen to my records. And if I decide I don't like an album anymore, I can always trade it or sell it. And if I, if I do like a record, I have a lifetime to listen to it. So... There's never enough time to listen to all your records, and anyone that says they listen to all their records when they have, like, over 500 is lying to you, because there's physically not enough time in the day. Um, but the point is that you, you know, as collectors, we're proud of the, of the albums that we amass within our collection, and, um, Jesus, this is, I've never, this is easily, with this is without a doubt the hardest, the hardest button to button, um, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to end up bending whatever record is in here. Guys, the rest of the live stream is going to be me opening this this record. All right. Des desperate, desperate time stop for desperate measures. I'm doing some ripping. Like, can you guys see what's happening here? Can you Can you see this? What if I open this and this is like my holiest grail? Like it's a uh, Soundgarden Super Unknown 320. Just someone found it and sent it to me and made me work for it. I mean, that would be a fun story, but whatever this is, this it's going to be like some like $4 record that I forgot I bought. Um, the record that you're seeing on the outside of here is not the record that I bought. That's part of the packaging. I didn't buy this Schubert Symphony record. <laughs> All right, we're getting closer. We're getting closer, guys. Oh my gosh. What the heck? What the heck is happening with this? This is so crazy. All right. If this is a grail and I'm manhandling it, I'm going to be so mad. Oof. But it's... It smells like an old mildewy record. That's what it is. This this Schubert record s smells like absolute garbage. Whoever owned this lived in like the city dump. Whew. This is like tortured. You guys are watching me actually suffer to get to this record. Oh my gosh. Okay. And it's still in more packaging. So whatever's inside of here is still packaged. Who packages this well? And by well, I mean terribly. All right, guys, are you all invest? Are you are you as invested in this as I am now? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna cut myself trying to open this. I'm about to cut my life into pieces. All right. I almost wish I had another camera to show what was happening down here. All right. We're almost to the core. All right. We got rid of this disgusting outer package. Goodbye. What the heck is in here? Yo, I am so scared I'm gonna bend this. The person that packaged this must have spent so much time. It's in a MoFi sleeve, which is kind of cool. Um, all right, we're almost there and I have to continue to uh, answer super chats to keep the suspense going. So Tyler, thank you for the super chat. Uh, thoughts for Donda and expectations. My thoughts are I'm extremely excited for it. Um, I, was there another song snippet tonight? I've been kind of preoccupied. I haven't had a chance to listen yet, but I loved the song snippet from last night. Felt very uh, ultralight beam-esque. I think that this album will be as good as Pablo, which falls probably... Um, seventh for me in his discography maybe six, six or seventh 
Um, I'm very excited for it. This is not a Steve Miller hat. This is the Too Many Records logo. The channel that you're on, come on. Come on. You're better than that. Oh my gosh. And after all of this work, do you want to know what this record is? It's a record that many of you might not know, actually. This is an album called Zonky. It's called Zonky. Um, and the worst part is, I think they might have sent me... Hold on. Did they send me the wrong variant, too? God damn it. They sent me the wrong variant. They sent me the black variant, and I wanted the colored one, and I paid for the colored one. After all of that, they sent me the wrong record. <sighs> it's okay. It's okay. Wow, what an absolute disappointment. Anyway, they're going to get a complaint from yours truly. Zonky is a, an album by a band called Umphreys McGee, which is a jam rock band. Um, I actually don't know Umphreys' solo material that well, but this album is basically them performing a ton of mashups. So, like, you can see right here they have, like, um, a bunch of crazy stuff. They have, like, the National Anthem by Radiohead with Loser by um, from Beck with In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. Um, they have Sad But True, Metallica, and Clint Eastwood, Gorillaz. This isn't a DJ. This is a full band playing these songs and mashing them up. This is such a cool record. Um, Bulls on Parade and Mark on the Bus, Rage, Rage and Beastie Boys. There's so many cool mashups on here. Um, definitely check this out. Um, but I will be reaching out to them and saying, number one, your packaging is ridiculous. Number two, you sent me the wrong record, jabroni. Um, anyway, huge disappointment, but you live and you learn. Let's keep going. Um, after all of that, folks, it was a disappointment. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? We worked so hard for that. And by we, I mean I worked so hard for that. But that's all right. That's, you know, you live and you learn. Hopefully sellers will make it right. I didn't say brony, Luke. I said jabroni. They're different terms. Um, Carson says, when am I going to get my RSD haul? I have talked about that twice now. I am going to be doing the RSD haul next week, and it's also going to be general thoughts on RSD in general, which may or may not be as positive as you think. This is crazy. What is this? This is like a crazy poster that just came with this. I'm, I don't know what this record is yet. This is awesome. I don't know what this is, but this is rad. I dig it. So what is in here? Oh, I think I know what this is. Is this Echo 2K? Yeah, I think that's what this is. Okay. So this is Echo 2K. That's a really cool poster. Um, Echo 2K is... It's kind of a crazy sleeve. A lot of the design seems to be... There's like text written on here. It's like a very complex generic sleeve. Um, I kind of wish it had a regular sleeve, but it's a very cool design. And if you look closely, like the lyrics are on the outer sleeve. Um, very cool. But Echo 2K is like um, one of the, like the newer wave kind of like like ambient, ethereal, experimental pop, little cloud rappy at times. Um, Echo 2K is awesome. And this was, um, I think, first ever vinyl release, I believe. And um, it sold out really fast. Um, I was lucky to see it pop up on Reddit before it was gone. But definitely a cool sleeve. Um, it's got a little wave to it. See this? It's like a little like little lumpy. Like I don't know why it has so many air pockets, but it is what it is. It's cool. Um, all right, let's keep going. I like a lot of a lot of people in the chat right now knew exactly who I was talking about just now, which is cool. It means that I'm cool and I'm hip and I'm in. I'm I know what the kids are listening to, the Echo the Echo Two K. Oh, 
Oh, I love this. A little postcard. Thanks, Matt. Enjoy. From the Comeback Vinyl crew. Thanks, Comeback Vinyl. This is, um... This is the beginning of my descent into a new band, guys. I decided that I am going to get into U2. It's a band that I've fought getting into for most of my life. I will say that I've enjoyed a song here and there. Growing up, Vertigo was a fun song. I enjoyed it. Um, I love some of their singles. You know, obviously Anthemic, Where the Streets Have No Name. Um, One. So many iconic songs. But I've never dug into U2 ever. And this is their first record, and it has one of my favorite U2 songs, I Will Follow, as the first song on the record. Um, I am going to do a deep dive in their whole discography, because, um, hey, Frank! What's going on, Frank? Thanks for the super chat. Crazy day. You and I will have to talk soon. Um, glad you made it, man. U2 is a band that I, I think I would really love. I gave them a, a deeper shot. Um, I was watching the Defiant ones, and I was watching um, Jimmy Iovine talk about his experience working with them, and it just seemed so interesting. And um, I actually picked up another U2 record that I'll be showing in a hall next week um, that I found this this past weekend on Record Store Day weekend. Um, so this is the new limited edition that came out, I think, last year on white vinyl. I Will Follow is an absolute fantastic song. Um, I'm hoping that I can kind of like get into them and start to really enjoy their output. I mean, if you look at the critical reviews of almost every one of their records, almost all of them are very, very, very well received. So I think that um, I will begin here and move forward and see what happens. Tim, thank you so much for the super chat. Did you have a question for me? I would be happy to answer if that's the case. Um... The listening event for Donda tomorrow. Am I tuning in? Am I Matt Kessler of Too Many Records? Of course I'm tuning in for the Donda listening event. It's one of the highlights of my year. The new Kanye. There is no artist that does an album rollout like Kanye West. It is an, it is an all-encompassing experience. There's nothing like it. There's no artist that does it. You've got speculation, you've got disappointment, you've got surprises, you have the entire internet ablaze. It's the best. The new Kanye album, if you, if, you, if you just woke up from a coma, the new Kanye is supposedly dropping Friday with a live stream event in Atlanta Thursday night, tomorrow night. Um, I have high hopes for it, I really do. And I might do a first impression video. Would you guys want to see a first impression video of Donda if it does actually come out? I've, I've done a lot of them in the past, so. So this next record is one that I picked up a different variant of, and um, I was uh, extremely disappointed by a multitude of features. So this is Hiatus Coyote's latest record, Mood Valiant, which I've heard only good things about. Um, I purchased something from their band camp that was called a, I think it was called like a hand decorated sleeve or hand decorated jacket it was like a special variant and it was like 50 bucks and i was like this sounds cool maybe they're all like doing unique drawings or something so what we ended up getting was a black disc with a white blank label in a inner sleeve that they splattered paint on and then an, a white outer sleeve like a generic outer sleeve with a cutout um that had them sign it in sharpie that was the hand drawn variant or whatever um but the kicker to all that was that the disc i got was unplayably warped like i'm talking like <sighs> so i messaged them and i was like guys what the heck is going on and they were kind enough to send me a standard variant to replace it so i still have the cool outer sleeve that's signed by the band and the pointless painted inner sleeve First of all, I just don't understand why artists ever do anything to a generic white inner sleeve, whether they sign it, or they draw on it, or they paint it. No one wants that. No one wants their record signed on the generic white inner sleeve. No one. So stop. Stop. Um, but I'm excited to actually listen to the record because, like I said, it was absolutely wrecked when I got it. Um, this is the... 
Oh, they did me dirty again. I lit. Oh my god. Now, now I'm mad. Now I'm actually mad. I was talking to the customer support. Are you ready? <laughs> I was talking to customer support, and they're like, "We'll send you the glow in the dark version for free." And I said, "No, thank you. Um, I like to listen to my records, and glow in the dark records sound like butt. So I don't want the glow in the dark version. You can just send me the standard variant, the red and black, like the standard." They sent me the glow in the dark. I specifically said I don't want that. This is the more expensive variant. I don't want it. I want to listen to the album and have it sound good. And they still sent me the glow in the dark. So this was an overall zero experience. I'm very upset. Um, did not get what I thought I would get on multiple occasions. So just redonkulous to me. Um, that's my... This has been a this has been a, a tragic unboxing, I would say. Just a real just a real pisser. Um, but such is life. Alright, the final record. And then we'll do a little QA. And then I'm going to go play Returnal on PS5, because that game rules, and I'm having a great time with it, even though it's hard as hell. So here we have Oh! Someone was asking about this earlier. It's uh they all showed up finally. I ordered this bundle like eight, nine months ago. This is a bundle of records by A1, and some of them are A1 and Phonics. Phonics is an amazing DJ, and A1 is an amazing rapper. So we have Nothing Less. We have Return to the Golden Era. And we have um, Defi Def Defacation. I don't know how you pronounce that. I'm not going to say the right one. Um, I thought I ordered, I thought it was four records it was supposed to be. I got to look into that. But yeah, A1 is great. Um, uh, yeah, so Awan's a really good rapper, and that is how we're ending that part. So now let's do some q and I'm going to answer some questions. Um, if you missed the live stream up until now and you want to see what I unboxed, I will be posting the video um, possibly on the channel. I don't know. It might be unlisted. It might be on the channel. It kind of depends on a few factors. Um, but you can always find it. I always post it in the Facebook group if you did miss it. So you can go back and check that out. Um, let's see. Let's get some good questions, folks. Someone said any lo-fi artists except instead of Mikkel and lo-fi samurai. Yeah, I mean, I have like fifth, I have a whole cube of amazing lo-fi artists over there. Um, off the top of my head, I mean, my favorite is Moo, M-O-O-W. Um, I really like some of the stuff by One Two, um, Jin Sang, HM Surf, uh, and there's so many good lo-fi artists, and they all, you know, my one of my favorite lo-fi records is by, um, it's uh, Growth Idealism, um, I think the band is Idealism, the album is Growth, I think that's right really atmospheric great lo-fi like really special stuff that's that kind of separates itself from the pack um it's late bro i know it's late i know it's late um trust me i just felt like i wanted to do wow i finished the live stream and 30 people just left i'm still talking i'm still doing things um How's my cube game, player? Uh, I have way too many cubes around here. I have just Kallax on Kallax, just full. It's it's getting crazy. Any shoegaze or dream pop recommendations? Um, I mean, outside of the obvious early shoegaze wrecks, like, you know, uh, I, I believe Valentine. I mean, there's, some, there's a new shoegaze band I really like called um, Pink Shiny Ultra Blast. They're really good. I gotta be honest, I'm not a colossal shoegaze fan, but I love Dream Pop. I mean, there's so much good Dream Pop. Yumi Zuma. Um, it's so hard to like think of things on the spot. If you message me, I'll think of some good recs and I'll send them to you. Um, do I own a Bluegrass album? I don't. However, I did listen to Billy Strings recently and he's amazing, so I might have to pick that up. I think the record's out of print though, so... I don't think I'm going to drop a ton of money on it, but I do think that uh, ultimately I might like Bluegrass more than I think. How often do I go through my records to see which ones I'd rather sell or trade for something else? Um, 
fairly frequently. I'd say at least once or twice a month I'll go through some stuff and kind of just be like, do I still want this? Um, you have to clear up space. Like space is the finite thing. You know, money is money's finite and, you know, all that. But space is what you need to keep shuffling, right? Sunny War. Oh, Frank. Frank and I went record shopping and I picked him out two records and he's giving me thumbs up on both. I gave him Sunny War's record that ORG pressed. Um, really, really good album. And Caesar's Palace, which it, most of you guys know them as uh, the Caesars. You know, Jerk It Out was their big single, but they are one of my favorite kind of like alt rock. A little punky at times, a little indie at times. Um, from Sweden. They're amazing. <clears throat> Any albums I regret selling that have skyrocketed in value? Yes. I, I had a copy of Alchemist's Israeli Salad on green avocado vinyl. Um, I think I sold it for like a hundred bucks one, like maybe like four or five years ago. It goes for like four or five hundred dollars now. And I'll never, it's probably never going to get repressed. And it's a good, it's a good album. I don't know why I sold it. I probably wanted to buy a different grail. There's so many stories like that. It's crazy. Um, what's my go-to record store in LA? That's a good question. I mean, Amoeba Hollywood is my favorite record store in the world, the new one and the old one. Um, but Freak Beat Records in LA is great. I usually find some good stuff at Record Surplus. Um, there's a lot of good stores. LA actually, I think, has the most good stores in a small area of anywhere that I've ever lived. Thoughts on New Job is? I have been a colossal fan of New Job is for a large portion of my life. One of the earlier videos on this channel was actually 2015. I did an artist of the month segment that got quickly. Um, it, it, it didn't happen for a while. It, it, it didn't really take off the way I thought it would. But New Jabez was my, I think, first or second artist of the month. For someone trying to get into rock, what bands or artists would I recommend? Well, that depends because I'm a big grunge rock fan, which is a subset of rock. Um, but I mean, I don't think you can go wrong with Pearl Jam, Stone Temple Pilots, um, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden. I mean, they, they're grunge, but they're definitely rock too. I also really find myself listening to a lot of Stone Sour and Slipknot. I think that they're extremely talented. Am I attending the Album Circle Zoom call? Absolutely not. I was invited, but I am not attending. Um, you have over 2,000 K records. That would mean you have 2,000 thousand records. That's coming from me. That's, that's too many records. I think, um, can we see that live at Ben Arroyo PJ vinyl? It's actually in my closet over there and I'm too lazy. I'm sorry, but you can go see it in the video. It's right there, though. I can see the corner of it peeking out. I ha I, I'm, I'm actually uh, I'm trying to make a shadow box for the box so it's protected from, like, dust and any, like, damage. It's going to be like a shadow box with museum glass for the, the box. Um, for those of you that don't know that maybe are new to my channel, I recently got a copy of Pearl Jam's um, Live at Benaroya Hall four-disc box set signed by the entire band. And I paid a lot of money for it, but it's worth considerably more than I paid. Um, and it's one of my favorite bands of all time and one of their best live shows. But I'm going to get a shadow box made. And right now, it's currently in like a big Ziploc bag. So I'm just trying to like keep it pristine as best as possible. Um, have I picked up any concert tickets for the near future? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to see Death Cab for Cutie. I'm going to see Machine Gun Kelly. I'm going to see... Who else? Motion City Soundtrack, Jose Gonzalez with Rufus Wainwright, Rufus Wainwright, a tongue twister. Um, I'm going to see Chloe Moriando, who's like this new kind of like young, pop punky, acoustic, um, edgy, 18-year-old singer-songwriter. She's playing a bar here, and she's awesome, so I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of shows that are kind of up in the air. I'm thinking about going to Pearl Jam's recently announced Ohana Fest um, double headlining weekend. Um, lots of good stuff. Am I going to try to score the Young Bay Japanese Disco Edits box set? Yes. Um, I love Young Bay, one of my favorite future funk artists. I would love to get the box set. We'll see how fast it sells out.
Hey, Pens, the Avalanche, thank you for the super chat. The Avalanche is U.S. tour. Think I'll go? Yes, I hope to get tickets on Friday. Um, you know, I don't want to flex too hard. And I don't want to promise anything ahead of time, but I am lucky enough that the Avalanches follow me on Instagram and occasionally I'll be really flattered because they'll like my photo. Um, and sometimes they'll respond to my DMs, which is really cool. They've been one of my favorite bands for a very long time. And I DM them asking if when they're in town in March of next year, if they would be down to do a little video crate digging. And they responded and said, it sounds like it'd be fun. Now, I can't say for sure if they'll actually be free, but how cool would that be if I did a video crate digging with the avalanches? I mean, that would just be like the whole whole channel coming full circle. That would be so cool. Um, so many questions. You guys are bringing the heat. I if you if you want your question answered for sure, drop a super chat because I only got about five more minutes in me. I think. Um, thoughts on the war on drugs? I've never been able to get into them. I think their music's a little boring. I've seen them live at a festival. I was also a little bored. Um, I just feel like they kind of do like the Springsteen, Bob Dylan. You know, I feel like it's been done before. I'm not. I kind of. I don't know. It's not for me. Can I scratch one of my records for you? No. New Amoeba, not as good. Disagree. I love the New Amoeba. I had a great time there. I found a ton of good stuff. Um, I love the New Amoeba. I can't wait to go back. Um, I might be able, I might be in LA next month for a little bit, and I would love to pop in and see what they've restocked the bins with since the opening. <clears throat> How was Amoeba Berkeley? I actually loved Amoeba Berkeley. I think that Amoeba Berkeley is better than San Francisco which I think is the worst Amoeba after having been to a bunch of them now. I think Berkeley is the second best. Um, I'm actually going to probably add my haul from my San Francisco weekend into my Record Store Day video, so look forward to that. That should be pretty fun. My favorite Kanye album and song. Album is 808s and Heartbreak, and song is probably Streetlights. Um, I don't know. It's impossible to say my favorite Kanye song. It's all mood-dependent. Um, you're coming to Portland this summer. Nice. What two or three record shops do you need to hit up? Um, Everyday Music, Music Millennium, and I love Final Form, personally. Um, if you like soundtracks, video game music, emo, it's a small shop, but it's like a retro game shop, too. I did a video on them, if you didn't see it on the channel, about a month ago or less. Um, really, really good store, and the guy who owns it is a super cool dude. Am I a fan of Childish Gambino? Yeah, I'm a gigantic fan. I've talked about Gambino for seven years straight on this channel. Love me some Bino. Any new releases on my label this year? That's a great question. There is one that I'm going to be hopefully doing end of summer or early fall. Um, I'm waiting for the records. To, I, I Both the records, actually two of the three records that are still unshipped have gone to press. I don't think Marcus D has gone to press yet. There's just such backups right now in all the plants. I don't want to hold everyone to like, I don't want to have like eight pre-orders going and um, like have it like, you know, have them not ship. I feel like that's a bad look. So I'm trying to kind of pace myself, but I have lots of other artists lined up. I just don't know when I'm going to be pulling the trigger on them. Um, some, Tyler got some Slipknot on vinyl and some Stone Sour. That's awesome. Did I get Zarface, Zar Noir? I love the art for it, but um, I didn't pick it up. It's a it's an instrumental record, right? How is it? Have you guys heard it? What's my dream box set I would want from a hip hop artist or group? I mean, honestly, if MoFi could convince Kanye to give them all of their stuff to master for vinyl, can you imagine a Mobile Fidelity Kanye box set? Because all of his records sound like just okay on vinyl and Kanye is known for being someone that is extremely into the world of music and production and sound and the fact that he puts out these records that are so average sounding is is a, is baffling to me so if there was a mofi Kanye box set i the amount of money i would spend on that i, I would it would be everything i own i would i would trade any amount of records i would if, if that box set went out of print and i couldn't get it and I had to trade my Ben Arroyo, I might do it. That's how much I want a Kanye MoFi box set. Let's see. When do I find the best time to spin vinyl? I love spinning vinyl in the morning with my coffee and 
at night before bed. Those are my favorite, my favorite times. Um, very different energy in both times. Um, have I bought Alchemist and Arm and Hammer's Haram on vinyl? I have purchased it. It's a really good record, actually. I, I mean, The Alchemist doesn't miss very often. Did I pick anything up on Record Store Day? You will see in my video next week. Did Metallica sell out with Kill 'Em All? Is that their first record? <laughs> All right, we have slowed down, and I think I am going to end this for the evening, but this has been lovely. Thank you guys for surprise joining me. I really appreciate everyone who took the time to drop a super chat, everyone who took the time to drop a regular chat. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, I have an amazing video coming out tomorrow. Please watch it. It's going to be a game changer for the vinyl community. I really, truly believe this. And with your help, it will. So look forward to that tomorrow, late morning PST, and we'll talk in that video. Look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.